Hello everybody, welcome to Nostalgia News Network. Today, I, the host, am giving out 15 fun facts about Super Mario Bros. from 1993. Ready? <laughs> I thought so. Let's begin. Number 1. The film was distributed by Buena Vista Pictures Distribution and was released in the U.S. on May 28, 1993. It was also directed by a British husband and wife duo named Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel, who are known for directing a few Max Headroom projects, including the TV show and made-for-TV movie. Number 2. The budget of the film was an estimated $48 million. It managed to make just over $8 million its opening weekend, and its total worldwide gross was just under $21 million, making it a box office flop. Critics and audiences weren't too kind to the movie either, giving the film a 29% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 3. The film, as you might know, was based on the 1985 video game Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System. But the writers put an emphasis on dinosaurs into the script because, of course, it was the 90s and dinosaurs were all the rage. To be more specific, according to the movie, the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs split the world into two dimensions. There's our Earth, and then there's the Earth where dinosaurs continue to thrive and evolve into human-like creatures that lay eggs and all that. Number 4. The film stars actors Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo as Mario and Luigi, and Dennis Hopper as the villain, King Koopa. Bob Hoskins is known for playing Eddie Valiant in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Smee in Hook. John Leguizamo wasn't a huge name yet, but he would go on to play Pastario in The Pest, and voice Sid in the Ice Age movies. And Dennis Hopper is known for Waterworld, True Grit, and the animated film Alpha and Omega, which was one of his final film roles before he passed away. Number 5. John Leguizamo claimed in his autobiography that he and Bob Hoskins absolutely hated working on the film, and would frequently drink liquor to the point of getting drunk to make it through the experience. Dennis Hopper, on the other hand, claimed he did the film so his son would have shoes. But to quote Hopper, his son didn't need shoes that badly. Dad, I don't need shoes that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Number 6. In the original games, thwomps are the names of the huge spiky blocks that try to crush Mario and Luigi. In the movie, however, they are the name given to rocket boots that make the characters jump high into the air. And if you listen closely, the sound the boots make when activated is very similar to the sound that Mario makes when he dies in the original games. Not to mention, the boots are powered by batteries that resemble bullet bills, which are the enemies in the Super Mario games that resemble giant bullets with faces. Number 7. In the dinosaur universe in the movie, there are many signs that allude to the enemies that appeared in the original Super Mario Bros. games. Such signs include Wiggler and Malt Liquor, which reference the Caterpillar enemies, Bullet Bills, referencing the bullet enemies, Hammer Brothers Tattoos, of course referencing the turtle-like enemies that throw hammers, and Fry Guy Flamethrowers, a nod to the fire enemies. Number 8. The names of the minions of King Koopa in the movie are named Spike and Iggy. In the original games, Spikes are the enemies that throw Spike balls, and Iggy is the name of one of Bowser's Koopalings. Number 9. Yoshi does in fact make an appearance in this film. He is a puppet and was capable of making 64 separate movements because of the 200 feet of cable inside its 3 foot tall structure. In total, 9 puppeteers were used to operate the puppet. And if that wasn't enough, the sounds and vocalizations Yoshi makes are done by Frank Welker, a very famous voice actor known for voicing characters such as Fred and Scooby-Doo, Dang, I still don't have a catchphrase! and Megatron and Soundwave in Transformers. Because everything I touch is food for my hunger! My hunger for power! We can concentrate the energy into energon cubes. But he's also known for making creature noises, such as Abu from Aladdin. Abu, will you knock it off? Number 10. The de-evolution guns seen in the film were actually a Super Nintendo Lycon accessory called a Super Scope, but painted gray. The Super Scope was more like a bazooka instead of a regular laser gun, like the original Nintendo Entertainment System had, and was wireless, powered by batteries, and used a sensor. Number 11. Big Bertha was the name of a fish who had an affection for Mario in the games. But in this movie, she's a human character and the bouncer at the Boom Boom Bar, which is named after the recurring boss in the games. Number 12. Bob Hoskins, who played Mario, had quite a few injuries on the set. At one point, during a chase scene, he broke his finger when the van's door slammed on his hand. He ended up wearing a cast painted the same color as his skin to make it look like a hand. 
In addition to breaking his finger, Bob himself recalled that he was stabbed four times, electrocuted, and nearly drowned. Number 13. At the climax of the movie, Mario kicks King Koopa with the Thwomp Boots, and he lands into a giant bull held up by chain links and starts attacking from there. This can be seen as an homage to Super Mario World, where Bowser attacks Mario or Luigi from his flying clown car. Also in the climax, King Koopa and Mario are seen on an industrial bridge. This is also an homage to the first Super Mario Bros. game, where Mario or Luigi fight Bowser on the bridge at the end of the levels in the castles. In the same scene, Mario uses a bob which actually resembles the version seen in the games. Except here, the bob wears shoes with the Reebok brand. Number 14. If you watch the movie all the way through, after the credits, there's an after credit scene where two Japanese investors visit Brooklyn to see Iggy and Spike, and claim they want to make a video game based on their many adventures. I must say, we have a very exciting proposal. A video game based on your many adventures. What would you call it? The Super Koopa Cousins! Just imagine that. Getting Super Koopa Cousins instead of Super Mario Brothers? That probably exists in an alternate universe. Number 15. Like I said a few facts ago, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo hated working on the film. In fact, the whole production was a disaster. It went severely over budget, as Dennis Hopper claimed he was there for 17 weeks when he was supposed to be there for only 5. Also, as mentioned in John Leguizamo's biography, Rocky Morton, one of the directors, poured hot coffee onto an extra's head just because he didn't like the extra's costume. Not to mention, the film was constantly getting rewritten, to the point where the actors no longer paid attention to the daily rewrites. Did you enjoy the video? Well then, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, follow the official Nostalgia News Network Facebook page and the TikTok where clips from nostalgic movies and TV shows are uploaded. Links will be in the description. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Nostalgia News Network, and I'll see you all next time.